The last decade has seen significant interest and investment in ports in the eastern seaboard of India. Uh, and that can be linked to you know various changes that we've seen in terms of trade uh, in Exim with India and its trading partners. But traditionally, a lot of India's trade happened with uh, countries in the western part of the world. Over the last decade, decade and a half, we've seen a significant shift in trade pattern where as much as three-fourths of India's imports today comes in from China and uh, countries in South Asia, and one-fourth of our exports are linked to uh, Asian countries, including China, with the expectation that the share of business with the East, uh, or countries in the East, is going to continue to grow at a faster clip than it has with uh, countries in the West. As a result, we've seen over the last 12-13 uh, years, several new ports have been emerging across uh, the eastern seaboard. Uh, you know, we've seen several ports emerge in uh, Tamil Nadu, in Andhra Pradesh, in Odisha, and in West Bengal over the last few years. Most of these, of course, being non-major ports, even though the government has recently announced the uh, investment in two new uh, major ports also on the eastern seaboard of the country. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, uh, beyond just uh, trade with uh, countries in the east has also been that Ports in, on, across the Western Hemisphere uh, have been struggling with uh, excess utilization in terms of uh, you know, what is above and beyond the recommended levels of utilization for ports. And that's been one of the reasons why several ports have been coming up around the East Coast of India. Some of the assets that we've seen in the East Coast of India are world class, not just in terms of uh, their marine side infrastructure, in terms of depth and channels and breakwaters but also significant focus on uh, the hinterland developments around storage and value-added activities. There's also been significant uh, upgradation of connectivity of some of these ports to uh, evacuation modes like rail and road, because that has been one of the challenges in the last few years. Of course, we've heard of you know many of the new ports. There's been uh, Krishna Patnam, Karaikal, Dhamra, and Gangavaram. You know, all of these ports, uh, many have also viewed them as slightly before their time. But I think what's important to note is that uh, from a long-term perspective, ports uh, will continue to be gateways of trade for India. We believe that as much as 92% of India's exim in terms of volumes happens through ports. And while the western ports have commanded a larger share, the expectation is that in the years to come, the east coast ports will play a, a bigger role uh, in, in terms of exim trade via seaports. Um, from an investor perspective, we believe that ports will continue to be uh, very favorable investment destination for investors and that's because uh, we've seen several pension funds, we've seen several long-term investors uh, realize uh, significant value. We've also seen the success of certain ports like uh, you know the Mundra port uh, which has led to a spate of investments both by private equity investors as well as strategics in ports. Um, uh, speaking specifically about Gangavaram, Gangavaram has the natural advantage of uh, you know having a hinterland in northern Andhra Pradesh. Uh, it doesn't have too much competition in terms of neighboring ports with the exception of Vishakhapatnam. Uh, one special advantage of Gangavaram is also the natural draft of approximately 21 meters which is, uh, uh, which is unique to uh, other ports in India. It has the capacity to handle larger vessels and all the Next few years, we expect uh, that this port will uh, add uh, a significant or attract significant attention from uh, you know, various entities that require ports on the east coast of India. Thank you.